Hi friends, here we are in our Beatitude Reflection Time. And as we do each week, we're going to join a whole crowd of people who are following Jesus. Jesus sees their hurts and pains and cares for them in many ways. He leads them to a mountain. Let's climb the mountain together so we can join our friends and hear Jesus speak to us. So there, remember, there are many ways we can climb the mountain. We can hike, I do like this. We can climb the mountain with a rope. We can roll up the mountain with our hiking wheelchair. We can climb by ourselves on the rocks or with a friend. So let's pick a way, you pick your way to climb the mountain and we're gonna go on up it, counting to 20. Are you ready to go? One, two, three, go! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Whew! I'm tired. Are you ready? Let's find a seat and settle our bodies after that big climb. In your imagination, let's look around and see what we can see. In Jesus' time, people believed that mountains were holy and special places to be with God. Maybe because they reached so high up into the sky. Can you stretch up as high as you can? Tippy toes! Jesus told them about God's kingdom on this mountain. You can think of a kingdom as the way the world works or is set up. In God's kingdom, there is abundance. There is enough food and honor and love and power and resources for every child of God to thrive. Jesus told us today from Matthew chapter five, verse five, that blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. When the people listening to Jesus heard this, they immediately recognized it. Their worship songs and prayers, the Psalms, another part of the Bible, spoke of this. Psalm chapter 37, 11 says, the humble will have the land for their own. Land was very meaningful and important. To own land was to have a special place in your community to have honor and a way to provide for your family. But most of the people Jesus talked to did not own land anymore. Landowners in their time were hated because they used violence or fighting to take that land for their self. This is where Jesus again turns things upside down. With this promise, Jesus says the meek which means the gentle, kind, and humble people, like most of you, are the ones who will receive land, not the people who use force and violence and fighting to take it. And this is not just the physical land of Israel where they lived. This is the whole earth. This also holds a powerful message for us about caring for the earth. How do you care for the earth? Meek or humble people live with an awareness of other people's needs. They think about the planet's needs, the animal's needs, and other people's needs. They remember that all the earth and land and everything on it belongs to God. They recognize how everything they have and receive, including land, belongs to God, and they take care of it as such. This means that using what they have, they take care of with respect and love. There's a good phrase I want you to remember. I am God's child, and everyone else is too. Could you say that with me? Because I think if we repeat it a few times, we'll remember it. I am God's child, 
and everyone else is God's child too. Let's shout it out together. I am God's child and everyone else is God's child too. This reminds us of two important truths. You are special and beloved, a unique child of God who deserves love and respect. And each person around you is another special, beloved, unique child of God who also deserves love and respect. And that is what a meek or humble attitude looks like. It means you don't see yourself or your needs as more important than the needs of anyone else or those around you. When we are meek, we are truly free. We realize everything and everyone is a special gift and is worthy of love and care.